Hi and welcome back to this series of videos on traditional Chinese medicine. My name is James O'Sullivan and I've been practicing this modality for over 30 years. This video is especially for my students of traditional Chinese medicine. But of course, if it helps you too, then all the better. In this video, we're going to discuss the TCM lungs and its partner, the large intestine. So let's investigate the Zhang Fu of TCM. To give you a little bit of perspective, in Western medicine, the body's organs are explained in terms of their anatomical structure and physiological functionings. However, in traditional Chinese medicine, or TCM, this approach is quite different. Organs are considered functional or energetic units of the body. Therefore, what is typically thought of as an organ, for example, the heart, liver, stomach, and so on, has a much broader meaning and application in traditional Chinese medicine. An organ's anatomical structure is not as important as its yin-yang properties or relationships with other organs. Chinese medicine recognizes five yin organs and six yang organs, also known as zhang fu organs, respectively. In the Huangdi Neijing, or the Yellow Emperor's Internal Classic, in the section, The Simple Questions, or the Su Wen, it states that the Zhang, or Yin organs, store up essential qi and regulate its outflow. The Fu, or the Yang organs, transform and transport substances without storing them. And for this reason, they, are, they may be overfilled, but cannot be filled to capacity which tells us that the five zang, or yin organs, mainly manufacture and store essence, qi, blood, body fluids, while the six fu, or yang organs, mainly receive and digest food, absorb nutrient substances, and transmit and excrete wastes. Today's topic is the Chinese lung and its associate Fu organ, the large intestine. We remember from a model on the five elements that the lungs belong to the element metal. The lungs are interiorly, exteriorly partnered with its yang organ, the large intestine. It opens into the nose, which makes sense since the lungs are called the delicate organ, susceptible to invasions of pathogenic factors. It nourishes the skin, which is associated with invasion of pathogenic factors and, of course, Wei Qi, the protective Qi of the body. Metal is the sound of grief. It is a descending sound. It is classically called weeping, like the sound of someone on the edge of tears, that slight catch in the throat at the middle of the word. Sadness or grieving are the emotions which creates imbalance within the metal element. The lungs dislike dryness, so modern times where people don't open windows and live in buildings with double glazing, triple glazing, central heating, this can cause disharmony in the lungs, which usually uh, result in symptoms like dry cough. The qi of the metal element is most prominent in autumn or the fall, which is the time of harvesting the abundance of summer. The lungs and large intestine benefit from pungent foods like scallions, spring onions, radish, uh, ginger, peppers, wasabi uh, and horseradish. But do remember that a complete clinical picture is needed in order to best advise our patient on the healing foods they should be taking and it may be best to nourish another organ to benefit the lungs. Think back on our module on five elements. The lung is situated in the thorax, it communicates with the throat and it opens into the nose. It occupies the uppermost position among the Zangfu organs and it's known as the canopy of the Zangfu organs. Its meridian connects with the large intestine with which it is interiorly, externally associated or related. Since the lobes of the lungs are delicate, intolerance of cold and heat, and they're highly susceptible to invasion of external pathogenic factors and disease. The lung is also known as the delicate organ. 
Its main physiological functions are dominating qi, controlling respiration, dominating dispersing and descending, dominating the skin and body hair, and regulating the water passages, which we will cover in a little more depth next. In the Huangdi Neijing, in the fifth chapter of the Su Wen, the plain or simple questions, it states that the qi of heaven is in communication with the lung, meaning that it is the most external zang organ. The chest is called the sea of qi. Dominating qi has two aspects, dominating the qi of respiration and dominating the qi of the whole body. Dominating the qi of respiration means that the lung is a respiratory organ through which the qi from the exterior and the qi from the interior are able to blend together. Through the lungs, the human body inhales clean qi from the natural environment and exhales waste qi from the interior of the body. This is known as getting rid of the stale and taking in the fresh. Dominating the qi of the whole body means that the function of the lung in respiration greatly influences the functional activities of the whole body, and it's closely related to the formation of zang qi of the chest, which is formed from the combination of essential qi of water and food and the clear qi inhaled by the lungs. It accumulates in the chest, it ascends to the throat to dominate respiration, and is distributed to the whole body in order to maintain the normal functions of tissues and organs, demonstrating its ability to blend exterior and interior qi. This leads us on to a quote from the Huangdi Neijing in the 10th chapter of the Su Wen, or Simple Questions. It says, all kinds of qi belong to the lungs. When the function of the lung in dominating qi is normal, the passage of qi will be unobstructed and respiration will be normal and smooth. Deficiency of lung qi may lead to general lassitude, feeble speech, weak respiration and shortness of breath. The qi extracted from food by the spleen is directed to the lungs where it combines with the air or kong qi to form zen qi. The lungs also disperse qi all around the body or all over the body with the help of the liver. If this process is strong, the voice will be powerful, circulation will be good, energy will be high, and there will be strength in the limbs. Dispersing here means distributing. It is by the dispersing function of the lungs that Wei Qi or protective Qi and body fluids are distributed to the whole body to warm and moisten the muscles, skin and hair. In the 13th chapter of the Ling Shu, the miraculous pivot, Huang Di says Qi refers to the substance that originates in the upper jiao, spreads the essential part of water and food, warms the skin, fills up the body and moistens the hair, like irrigation by fog and dew. The skin and hair located on the surface of the body, and including the sweat glands, serves as a protective screen to defend the body from exogenous pathogenic factors. The skin and hair are warmed and nourished by wei, or protective or defensive qi, and body fluids distributed by the lung, which controls respiration. The pores of the skin also have the function of dispersing qi and regulating respiration. Traditional Chinese medicine says that the lungs dominate skin and body hair and the pores are the gates to qi. The close physiological relationship between the lungs, the skin and the hair means that they often affect each other pathologically. For example, Exogenous pathogenic factors often invade the lungs through the skin and hair, giving rise to symptoms such as aversion to cold, fever, nasal obstruction and cough, reflecting failure of the lung in dispersing. If lung qi is deficient, failure of the lungs 
in dispersing the chi of water and food, which can result in the skin becoming pale and sallow and lead to deficiency of way defensive chi and therefore susceptibility to catching cold flus and other pathological disharmony when lung chi fails to protect the surface of the body there may be frequent spontaneous perspiration the lungs dominate descending and regulates the water passages as a general rule the upper zhang fu organs have the function of descending and the lower zhang fu organs the function of ascending. Since the lung is the uppermost zhang organ, its qi descends to promote the circulation of qi and body fluids through the body and to conduct them downwards. Dysfunction of the lung in descending may lead to upward rebellion of lung qi with symptoms such as cough and shortness of breath. Regulating the water passages means to regulate the pathways for the circulation and excretion of water. The role of the lungs in promoting and maintaining water metabolism depends on the descending function of lung qi. Dysfunction may result in edema, painful or difficult urination, decrease in the production of urine. When we say the lungs opening into the nose, the nose is the pathway of respiration. The respiratory and olfactory functions of the nose depend upon lung chi. When lung chi is normal, the respiration will be free and the sense of smell is acute. Dysfunction of the lung in dispersing, for example, due to invasion of wind cold, may lead to nasal obstruction, runny nose, Excessive pathological heat in the lungs will lead to shortness of breath and vibration of the ally nasi. Since the throat is also a gateway of respiration and an organ of speech through which the lung meridian passes, the flow of qi and the speech are directly affected by the state of lung qi. When the lung is diseased, usually causes pathological changes in the throat, such as hoarse throat or loss of voice. The corporeal and ethereal souls are the yin and yang of the person's soul. The corporeal soul is the yin or material aspect of it. It is most affected by grief and sadness. This is the key to the relationship between the breath and the emotions. Possibly why easy breathing calms the soul and constriction of the chest can constrict the emotions. The corporeal soul or the po is the yin material physical part of the human soul or spirit, whereas the yang aspect is called the ethereal soul or the hun. The corporeal soul is attached to the body and dies with it when the body dies. Closely linked to breathing, the corporeal soul allows for sharp movement and keen senses or sensations. Sadness and grief obstructs the movement of the corporeal soul. It is known that these emotions consume lung chi, which constrains its movement and affects breathing. This is why treatment of the lungs is so important when treating sadness or depressive states. Chivani Machiochia recommends the use of lung 7 and bladder 42 to treat the corporeal soul. When the lungs are in excess, one dreams of weeping. If the lungs are deficient, one will dream of white objects or about bloody killings. If the dreams take place in autumn, one will dream of battles and war. This is according to the simple questions or the su wen. When the lungs are in excess, one will have dreams of worry and fear or crying and flying. If the lungs are deficient, one will dream of flying and seeing strange ob objects made of gold or iron. This is according to the Ling Shu. The large intestine or da chiang is located in the abdomen. Its upper end connects with the small intestine via the ileocecum and its lower end is in the anus. The large intestine communicates with the lungs which it is externally and internally related 
as I mentioned previously. The main function of the large intestine is to receive the waste material sent down from the small intestine, absorb its fluid content, and form the remainder into feces to be excreted. Pathological changes of the large intestine will lead to dysfunction in the transportation function, resulting in perhaps loose stools or even constipation. More about this when we cover the patterns of disharmony of the Zanfu. Next, let's take a look at some of the important acupoints that benefit the lung and large intestine disharmony. To support these videos, you can buy our book and posters, Practical Chinese Medicine, where you will find a comprehensive, easy to read and understand theory of traditional Chinese medicine, as well as a chapter on the lungs and large intestine. Follow the link below. The detailed posters of the acupoints make a perfect feng shui size for clinic walls and study. To support the videos, you can buy any of these books and posters. Li Chui is located at the origin of the stylite process of the radius, one and a half sun above the wrist crease, and it's located by crossing the index finger by one hand over the thumb of the next. This is a special way to locate this point, but it's best demonstrated in class. The name of this point is translated as broken sequence. And this is the ancient term for lightning. We can understand this name in three ways. First, the electrical sensation that may be generated when needling this point. Second, the ability of Le Chui to clear heaviness and oppression of the chest in the way that a lightning storm clears the sky. And third, the sudden fork in the lung channel at this point. Le Chui was included in Madan Yang's Heavenly Star Points, his collection of the most vital acupuncture points. Gao Wu, the Ming Dynasty physician, includes Le Chui among the four command points. We could spend a long time revealing the effective functions of these acupoints, which is not the main reason for their mention here. So we'll, let's move on to the next acupoint. Taiyuan is located on the distal crease of the wrist at the lower border of the trapezium on the radial side. In Chinese medicine, there are two sources of post-heaven qi energy production, the food we eat and the air we breathe. Taiyuan is the single most important point on the lung channel to tonify the lung qi or yin, the two principal patterns of lung deficiency. Taiyuan is the Shu stream, Yuan source and earth point of the lung channel and as such are recommended to treat all Zhang disharmony. Taiyuan is also the Hui meeting point of the vessel. For instance, Su San Li or stomach 36 alone is an important point to tonify the Qi of the body and in combination with Taiyuan, the earth point of the lung meridian channel, to tonify the lung chi according to the principle of cultivating the earth to generate metal. Hegu is located midway between the junction of the first and second metacarpal bones and the margin of the web. Hegu was also included by Madan Yang in his heavenly star points, his grouping of the most vital acupuncture points. Gao Wu, the Ming Dynasty author, recognized the supreme importance of this point and included it among his four command points. Some hundreds of years later, it is still probably the best known and most commonly used of the acupoints. Hugu is a primary point to expel wind, cold and wind heat and to release the exterior, making it an excellent point to expel pathogens and nourish our immunity. Feishu bladder 13 is located one and a half sun lateral to the lower border of the spinous process of the third thoracic vertebrae. 
Feshu is the back shoe point of the lung, where the chi of the lung emanates from the interior of the body surface. And in common with all back shoe points, especially those of the yin zang organs, it has a strong action on regulating and tonifying, nourishing its corresponding zang organ at the deepest level. Feshu is the preeminent acupoint to treat all disorders of the lung. Feshu is an essential point to tonify the lung chi and nourish lung yin. Zangfu is located one sun directly below lung tu, six sun lateral from the Ren meridian. Zangfu is the front mu point of the lung. The term mu means to gather or to collect, and the front mu points are where the qi of the Zangfu gathers and concentrates on the, in, the anterior surface of the body. Zangfu, like all the front mu point, therefore acts primarily on the lung zang rather than the lung channel. That concludes our module on the lungs and large intestine. Wishing you well in your study and practice. Don't forget to like and subscribe. In the meantime, I hope you found this lecture useful and until next time, slantja.